Alright guys, this is the 22nd Disney Real Long Storybook episode. The title is The Rescuers Down Under. That includes no song. The narrator of this was William Woodson. Let's do it. This is the story of the rescuers down under. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. One cold, snowy evening, an urgent meeting was called at the Rescue Aid Society's New York headquarters. The chairmouse took the podium. Order, order, delegates, please pay attention. A wicked poacher named Mac Leach has kidnapped Cody, a young boy in Australia. This mission requires our very finest, and I know we are all thinking of the same two mice. Quickly, find Bernard and Bianca. At a classy mouse nearby, Bianca was making a toast. To my dear Bernard. And a wonderful partnership. Fingering the engagement ring in his pocket, Bernard leaned across the table. Miss Bianca, could you, would you be, be my, what I mean is. But before Bernard could finish, the maitre d' rushed over. Pardonnez-moi, a message from the Rescue Aid Society. You are needed for a dangerous mission in Australia. They headed straight for Albatross Airlines. It would be so nice to see our old friend Oriel. Oh, Bernard. He is assigned under new management, C. Milburn. They found Orville's brother in the hangar and quickly explained their mission. Wilbur saluted his new passengers. Storm or no storm, Albatross Airlines at your service. Giant kangaroos now, sports fans. Here we come. Yeah, let's go for it. Wilbur and the rescuers made good time by hitching a ride to Sydney on a jet, then flapped over to Mugwap Flats, a small airstrip in the outback. Wilbur circled in for a landing. Mugwamp Tower, this is Albatross 13 requesting permission to land. Over. Negative 13, three, you'll have to turn back. Our runway isn't long enough for a bird your size. Wilbur snorted indignantly. Look, pal, I can land this thing on a dime. Jake, the Aussie flight controller, rushed onto the field. Crazy Yanks think they can barge in and. Then Jake saw the lovely Miss Bianca. G'day. Welcome to Australia, ma'am. My name's Jake. At your service. Jake escorted Bianca from the runway, leaving Bernard to struggle with the luggage. Wilbur offered to help, but when he picked up the bag... Ah, I'm back! Big timer! Oh! Oh, boy! Oh! Ah! After the rescuers took poor Wilbur to the hospital, they prepared to set out in search of McLeach's hideaway. Jake shook his head when he saw Bernard's map. A map's not good in the outback, mate. We survive by instinct. He bowed to Bianca. What you need is a guide, man. Bianca curtsied and took his arm. Oh, Jake, thank you for helping us. You're such a gentleman. Jake led Bianca expertly across the hazards of Bloodworm Creek, Dead Dingo Pass, and Nightmare Canyon while Bernard was forced to bring up the rear once again. He also taught them how to acquire transportation. Jake lassoed a snake and looked him straight in the eye. Now listen, we've got a long way to go, and you're going to take us there, and you're not going to give me any trouble. Right. Wilbur was in his own mess of trouble back at the hospital. No! Wilbur leaped for the window, but the mic 
Lewis grabbed his legs and pulled him back into the hospital. Oh, hey, I'm back. I'm cured. Send me the bill, boys. <laughs> In a secret underground mine, McLeach was threatening to harm Cody. But Cody refused to reveal where his friend, a rare golden eagle named Marahute, lived. Why should I tell you? Just you can trap her? But Leech threw Cody into a damp basement where he kept the animals he trapped. I'll give you a night down here to think it over. But tomorrow, no more Mr. Nice Guy. The next morning as McLeach fixed breakfast, he came upon a brilliant idea when Joanna, his six-foot pet lizard, stole an egg. Joanna, I give you plenty of puss eggs. I give you snake eggs. Why, I'll even give you eagle eggs. But I want you to stay away from my... Eagle's eggs. That's it. That's the boy's weak spot. McLeach grabbed Cody from the basement. Come on, boy. Say goodbye to your little friend. Outside, just as Jake and the rescuers arrived at McLeach's hideaway, the entrance door lifted open. Jake jumped up. Bernard, it's me. Hop out. They saw McLeach push Cody outside. It's all over, boy. Your bird's dead. Someone shot her. Bang! Cody was in near shock. No, it's not true. McLeach laughed. <laughs> Too bad about those eggs. Now you better get out of here before I change my mind. After Cody ran off, McLeach disappeared inside. And from deep within the cave came a rumbling sound. Jake peered over the door into the cave. I don't know what McLeach is up to. But he must be tricking Cody. Get ready. Suddenly, McLeach's poaching from the bushwhacker came roaring through the entrance. Unnoticed by McLeach or Joanne, Jake and the rescuers jumped into the back. McLeach followed Cody to the edge of a sheer cliff. As the truck came to a stop, Jake jumped down. Cody's going down the cliff. We have to warn him that McLeach is here. Cody reached Marahuti's nest and felt the eggs still warm. Suddenly, a shadow fell across the nest. It was Marahuti circling over the nest. Cody couldn't believe his eyes. Marahuti, you're alive! Bianca was the first to reach the boy. Cody, be from the Rescue Aid Society. McLeach tricked you. He's up on the cliff. Cody tried to warn the Golden Eagle away. Turn back! It's a trap, Marahute! But it was too late. McLeach fired a net from his truck that snagged Marahute in midair. As McLeach reeled in his prize, Cody leapt off the cliff and grabbed onto the net. It's my fault he found you, Marahute. I won't let him take you. Thinking quickly, Jake lassoed the net with his rope and handed one end to Bernard and Bianca. Grab our mates, we're going for a ride. Bianca jumped for the rope and grabbed on tight, but Bernard missed and was left behind in the nest. At least lowered Marahuti and Cody into the cage on his truck. There she is, Joanna. The rarest bird in the world. Make me rich. <laughs> I got what I want. Now, what does Joanna want? How about some great big triple A jumbo eagle eggs? <laughs> you want them? <laughs> you want them? <laughs> Go get them! Helpless, Cody clutched the bars of the cage. Don't! But Joanna had already disappeared over the edge of the cliff toward the nest. Joanna climbed into the nest and bit hungrily into an egg. It was hard as a rock. She tried another with the same result. But Leech yelled to her from above. Yeah, what are you doing down there? She tossed the eggs over the cliff and slithered back to the truck, which roared off into the outback. Bernard poked his head out from underneath the nest and breathed a sigh of relief. He patted the real eggs 
beside you. Phew. Glad those rocks look just like you guys. As Bernard placed the eggs back into the nest, something crashed into the cliff beside him. Wilbur, what are you doing here? Wilbur dusted himself off and explained he had heard a loud bang and had flown in for a closer look. Bernard was relieved to see his friend. L uh, listen, Wilbur, I, I need you to sit on these eggs while I track down McLeach. Wilbur backed away. I don't sit on eggs. You get no from me. I will not ever sit on those eggs. But Bernard was scrambling back up the cliff. I knew you'd help. I'll be back as soon as I can. As Bernard followed McLeach's tire tracks through the outback, he realized he would never catch up to the bushwhacker without help. When he came upon a sleeping razorback hull, Bernard looked him straight in the eye like Jake had taught him. Excuse me. <clears throat> now look, I've got a long way to go. You're going to take me there, and you're not going to give me any trouble about it, right? Now get... McLeach had driven his prisoner straight to Crocodile Falls, with Jake and Bianca still hidden in the cage. Bianca looked out over the outback, hopefully. We mustn't lose hope, everyone. Bernard is still out there. McLeach tied Cody to the truck's crane, swung him out over the water, and lowered him toward the hungry crocodiles. <laughs> they like it when you use live meat. Cody was just inches from the crocodile's sharp teeth when the truck's engine went dead. I smell a big fat rat. But it wasn't a rat. It was a mouse. Bianca ran to the edge of the cage. Oh, Bernard, I knew you would make it. But watch out for Joanna. Bernard threw the leech's keys up to her before dashing away with a lizard in hot pursuit. McLeach grabbed his gun. There's more than one way to skin a cat. The bullet grazed the rope holding Cody. As McLeach took aim again, Bernard dashed through his legs. Joanna followed, bumped into McLeach, and the two villains fell into the rushing river. Just then, Cody's rope snapped, and he plunged into the water. Bernard jumped in after the boy, but they were both swept toward the falls. Just before plunging over the brink, Bernard and Cody were scooped up by Marabute's great talons. When they landed safely on the river's edge, Bianca threw her arms around her hip. Oh, Bernard, you were so brave. You saved us. Bernard shuffled his feet. Before anything else happens, M Miss Bianca, will, will, you, will, you, will you marry me? Why, of course I will. Jake, isn't Bernard wonderful? Jake smiled at them both. Not bad for a yank. That was the end of the story. If you would like to hear it again, just turn the tape over. This is Zachary Donson signing out. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more videos coming soon in your future.